So from time to time, people ask me if they want to get into programming, what language should they learn? Of course, there's a huge range of languages they could pick from. C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Go, Rust, and so on. And my answer is always Python. And sometimes people ask me who know a little bit about computer programming, what should they learn next? What should they do to expand their horizons? And again, my answer is always Python. So in this video, I want to look at three reasons why you should learn Python. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to install an IDE, an integrated development environment, and you can actually write your very first Python program in just a few minutes. So stick to the end and you'll actually be writing Python. Okay, so if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so it's never too late to start learning, but it's always too late to wait until another time. So let's see why you should learn Python. It's a high level interpreted language. When we buy high level, what we mean is it abstracts away most of the complex details of the computer's hardware. You don't need to know about how CPUs work and registers and memory allocation and stacks and heaps. You don't need to know any of that. Allowing programmers to write more human readable co code that makes it easier to learn and use compared to a low level language, for example, C or even lower than that assembly language. So this is a higher up level, which means you don't have to worry too much about how a computer works you just need to worry about how to write the software. Now, it's also an interpreted language. I do have a video here on this channel discussing different types of computer languages. And one of the things I discuss the difference in compiled language interpreted. Interpreted means that the code is executed line by line by an interpreter at the moment you run it. So you don't have to do anything before you write it. There's no pre-running stage, which would be the compilation stage. Okay, rather, it it takes that Python file and it goes through each line and says, right, what's the next thing I've got to do? What's the next thing I've got to do? Now, that actually makes it very quick because you just edit the file, then run it. Edit the file and then run it. You can run it immediately. However, there are speed disadvantages because compiled programs are compiled into the language of the CPU that's called machine code, which they can understand much quicker. So there are speed disadvantages. However, in terms of learning, in terms of development, it's instantaneous. You'd make a change, you run it. You make a change and you run it. Now, I, before we go into more, I thought really a great way to understand what we're talking about is to see a simple program. So here's a simple program. And from it, you kind of get an idea of what is Python. Now, look here, we've got these few lines here. So uh, what we're going to do is work out how old somebody is in years. And on line three here, we see that we say year is equal to and then we get an input. Ask the user for something. Enter the year you were born in four digits you know, 1999, whatever. Okay, we ask the question, have you had your birthday this year yet? That will determine on whether you're one year older or, or not. We work out today's date. Okay, and so there are things out, notice here, date time, where you can notice that there's this import statement here. That would be something you have to learn a bit about Python. But, you know, even, you know, for your first time you see it, you can work out there's something to do with date and time functions and we're going to use it in this program. And yeah, we are. We're going to try and work out today's date. You work out how old they are in the in years by what? Well, you take the year that we're in now minus the year they were born. You just check whether they answered no to the question about whether their birthday is there. And if it is no, then you just take one year off and then you print out you are years old. This is a Python program. Okay, I wanted just to show you that it's really simple. It's just a set of steps that you want to achieve to do something. Ask for an input, do a calculation, print out an output. That's the basic fundamentals here. And here's an example of it running. Enter the year you were born, 1979. Have you had your birthday yet? Yes. Therefore, you are 45 years old. So there you go. You, you would type that in and you can run it. And then you get that instant uh, feedback of your program running. And when I was learning to program, that's the thing I liked the most. The fact that you would write something, you'd run it. You write it, you run it. And that seems to be that instant, uh, you know, feedback, that instant, you could almost say satisfaction that you, you've you written a program and something's happening. And that was, that, that was really useful to me when I was first starting to program. Okay, so let's carry on with the three reasons. The first is it is beginner friendly and easy to learn. Python's syntax is easy to learn. It uses plain English keywords 
and minimal punctuation. If you have seen other programming names like C and C, there are semicolons everywhere. OK, there's no semicolons in Python like that. So you don't have to put a semicolon in the end of every line. So it makes it easy to read and, and you can start writing code quite quickly. So as I said earlier, being a high level language, Python abstracts away many of the complex details of computer hardware, which means you can focus on software concepts without getting bogged down about the intricacies of CPU architecture or system architecture, memory management, and so on. And Python uses dynamic typing. That means you don't need to declare the data type of a variable. So let's just go back to that program we were just looking at. So if we look here, year is obviously going to be a, an integer, a number, 1,979, whereas uh, have you had a birthday yet is, a, is a, a small n or a big n or a big y or a small y. So it's, it's a letter. And we don't have to say anything here to Python like this is a letter, this is a number. It knows automatically what to, it's, that's called dynamic typing. You don't have to say an integer make this this a, a, a character string or a character yes or no and it handles it very very uh, straight away it's dynamic it handles it all for you now some people say that's not a good thing because it can be prone to errors and there is an argument in software engineering about why that can be a negative thing but for the moment when you're learning to program just being able to say this is equal to this this is equal to something else it, without worrying about, oh, is it a floating point number? Is it a decimal, which means a decimal number? Is it an integer? Is it a Boolean? Is it, you just does it. And that's one of the great things for making it easy to learn. Now, Python is widely used. That's the second reason to look into it. Web development, data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning, automation tasks, including DevOps, they all use Python. So Python is one of those languages that if you if you learn it, you can do just about anything. You can even write games with Python. You can, you know, so you can do everything from writing a website to writing a game. Uh, we'll see in a minute, you can even run it on microcontrollers. So it, you know, it is widely used. And so Python has a large and active community of developers, which means there are ample resources and tutorials and documentation. It's not a, a niche language. You're not going to struggle to find, you know, uh, give me a tutorial on some more esoteric language. There's going to be Python is absolutely everywhere. It's one of the most popular programming languages in the tech industry and its demand continues to grow. Learning Python can open up job opportunities. That's the important thing I want to mention here. If you know Python, there is certainly job opportunities uh, related to Python. And because it's so popular, there are lots of libraries that simplify complex tasks so I mentioned in there you know machine learning and data science well there's a whole bunch of libraries that take away a lot of the pain for you automatically there's other things to do with web development there are frameworks that accelerate the development of uh, web stuff so it's all there for you so you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel every time there's going to be stuff that can you know, as I said you can write games there are python game specific stuff so you can you know you can write games pretty easily so whatever it is you're looking into there's going to be such a, there's going to be a big ecosystem around that particular thing and that's again because it's so widely used so point number two widely used meaning it's a good thing to learn and thirdly it's cross-platform so python works on windows mac os linux free bsd the other bsd so where it doesn't matter whether you're a windows user or a mac user or a linux user it doesn't you don't need to argue say oh but this is only for you know you use it whatever platform you're on you'll find python for it which is great and it runs on any processor, Intel, AMD, ARM, Apple, IBM processors, they all run uh, with uh, with Python. So it doesn't really matter where you learn it. If you learn it on Windows and then you get a job on Linux or you learn it on Mac OS and then you get a job where they're using Windows, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter what platform you learned it on. Python is Python and you can use it just about anywhere. It works on 32-bit processors, on 64-bit processors, not a problem. And as I said, it works on microcontrollers like the Raspberry Pi Pico. So in fact, there's a special version for microcontrollers called MicroPython. It's basically Python. So you can use Python on a very, very small microcontroller. And uh, I've got tutorials about this here on this channel. So you can program, get LEDs flashing, get servo motors working, read sensors, temperature sensors and humidity sensors. You can do all those kind of things using Python uh, on, on, on a microcontroller. So if you learn Python, you can go all the way up from a microcontroller right up to the cloud.
uh, and you'll be able to use it. In fact, it runs in a container if you want it to. It runs on Docker containers. It runs in the cloud. Uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they all support Python. So, it, you know, if you learn Python, you're not going to suddenly find yourself in an environment where it doesn't run. Well, how to get started, that's the important thing. Hopefully, I've convinced you to give it a try. Well, python.org is the best place to go for, for Python downloads and the official documentation. And if you want to get started, there is a great beginner's guide to Python on the python.org website. Of course, there are lots of other good resources for Python scattered across the internet. And also you should try uh, an integrated development environment for Python like Thony. And that's what we're gonna do now in a moment. I'm gonna show you how to get started with Thony and write your very first Python program. It'll take a couple of minutes. So keep watching the video because in a couple of minutes, you will actually have written your first program in Python. Now, Thony, which is an integrated development environment, comes with Python built into it, currently 3.10, but that changes as Python uh, new versions come out. Very simple installer, and the interface is very, very simple to start with, stripped away of all of the things that can distract you. You can make it more complex, but as you'll see now, you just dive in, write a Python program, run it, and you're up and running. Okay, then installing Thony is really, really easy. You just go over to thony.org. And as you can see right here at the top, there are downloads for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. I'm using a Windows PC in the particular instance. So I'm gonna download the 64-bit installer, which includes Python 3.10. Click on that, and then that will start the download. Double click on the .exe file that's been downloaded to start the installation. Installed only for me, that's good enough for most people. Then it just takes you through the very simple installation wizard. Uh, next, uh, I accept the license. That's a good enough place to install it. Uh, yes, I'd like it in my start folder. No, I don't need a desktop icon. Uh, yep, go ahead and install it. Pretty simple. Okay, Thony is now installed and uh, we can uh, start running it straight away. Okay, so here we are presented with a very simple user interface. At the top here is where we write our code. Down at the bottom here is where we see any output. Really couldn't get much simpler than that. Let's just type in a very simple Python program. Okay, so we're gonna write a very simple program to convert Celsius into Fahrenheit. It's just three lines of code, very, very simple. So C, that's to be the, the variable that holds our Celsius value, we want the user to type it in. So to do that in Python, you use input. That means I'm asking for an input. And when you ask for an input, you give it a prompt. What do you want to be displayed? So the user knows what they're being asked. So enter a temp in C, okay? Now the thing is, is that of course, temperatures are generally a floating point number. So you know, 21.2 or something like that. So we just have to wrap this around here in a conversion to say that the answer that we get, although the user is gonna type in using the keyboard, which means it's gonna be a string, we wanna turn it into a float. So you just put it in around this float. Very, very simple. So the number we've now got is a decimal number, a floating point number. And then we're gonna use F for Fahrenheit. How do you convert it? Well, of course, it's uh, the Celsius number multiplied by 1.8 and then you add 32 onto it. That's pretty simple, so that's been converted. And then finally we wanna display that. So we just say print and we say uh, that is, and then comma, this is where we can specify a parameter here, comma, and then we just put F. So it will say that is, whatever the answer is, F for Fahrenheit. Very, very simple. We don't wanna make it complicated. Three lines of code. Enter the Celsius number, do the conversion, print out the results. Input, conversion, output. Really simple, three steps to bring. And then up here, there's this little run icon. Click run, and it's gonna say, right, here we go at the bottom. Please enter, well, let's try zero and see what that gives us. 32 degrees F, that's correct. Let's go up the other end. Let's type in uh, 100. That's 212 uh, Fahrenheit, brilliant. Uh, let's type in something like uh, 21.5, they are 70.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And there you go, you're already a Python programmer. Okay, so there you have it, why I think you should learn Python, how you can learn Python, get yourself up and running very quickly using Thony. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you know Python? Do you use it daily? Is it something you hate? Please do tell me all about it. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kinds of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.